So it's been kind of a rough week for open source code editors, specifically if you forked someone else's repo, claimed it was yours, claiming to build another open source cursor clone. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, I wanna to talk about another sort of command line tool that to be fair, leverages a closed source AI tool, but does it in a way that I believe is quite novel. This tool is called O1 Engineer, and it's from a developer we covered before, Pietro Strano. And what's cool about this is it takes kind of a new approach to what it means to use tools like this to write codes. So obviously you can log into OpenAI right now and you can use O1 to write code. But I think the integrations with how we use them are much more interesting. And I think we're past the point, like I was joking before, of just kind of rolling it into another fork of VS Code and then hoping it all works. So similar to Ader, this is a tool that's mostly terminal based and is mostly meant to be used kind of within an editor itself. And I think the way that it plans code and the way that it sort of starts to get at what agentic coding workflows could be is really, really cool. So I wanna get into more of this in this video. Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So this project has actually been around for some time, although it hasn't always been called O1 Engineer. So Peter describes this as a coding assistant built from the ground up to leverage O1 reasoning capabilities. So it's interesting that this is specifically meant for O1 and unlike Ader, which can be used with a number of closed source and open source APIs, this is specific to OpenAI's O1 model. He says it can create and edit multiple files or entire folders, which is pretty cool, plan complex projects, execute them, and write code reviews. And these bottom three to me are by far the most interesting because they're things that previously we thought code probably couldn't do and that were things that humans had to do. And the other thing that I find quite interesting with this that differs from coding workflows that we might see in Cursor or things like Pair AI is that you can actually chat to execute these commands. It's not like you're um, asking it for feedback and then only basically interacting with the model in terms of code or like basic commands about the code itself. So you can create files or folders. You can use edit to edit a file, files or folder content. So like rearranging things. You can add to existing files or folders using the chat context. Again, planning is a big feature here. And you can also have it review code. So, and the review feature, although it's interesting to use just as a standalone feature, is kind of a really important feedback mechanism through this whole system. So right now it's all on GitHub and we're gonna hop into that in just a bit. But what's cool is, is kind of the path that Pietro took to actually develop these features. So he says, a fun fact about building this, the first functionality I built was edit. So I use the script itself to keep refining and understanding what sort of instructions would work better with O1, which is kind of a different approach that at least I haven't seen before with tools like this. And it's quite different to how Ader works, although that's also still being actively developed. So he says the biggest performance improvement is in the editing and creation of large files, which was only possible with O1's uh, massive context window and also the way that it interprets code. So basically says here, uh, I was able to edit 2000 lines of Python in one shot with no errors, which to me as a developer is very impressive. He also says in order to assure the best results with editing, the script employs an agentic approach where an instance of O1 Mini provides edit instructions on which a second one applies, which this is why I was mentioning that a lot of the flows here are quite agentic, even if you're not directly kind of interacting with them in that kind of a way. And this is a paradigm that initially came from another one of his projects, Omni Engineer. And it's really interesting that it's been brought back into really the core workflow of O1 Engineer. So the Git repo is pretty straightforward. And I'll be in a stream tonight actually using this along with a few other things. And I might actually get into some of the more hilarious developments with all the people who are claiming to have a VS Code forks that do AI code editing. There are updated features. So kind of like the features of this release, which are enhanced file and folder management, uh, basically being careful with what they're letting your computer do, but basically letting the, uh, the AI add or edit components of your code. Um, project planning is by far the most interesting one. And he breaks down kind of how that works just a bit farther into the repo here and advanced workflows, which basically are ways you can um, create kind of like a function calling-esque way to call agents that then write your code uh, for things more than just doing code review or um, filling in features. So obviously the automated code generation is basically just coming from O1. That's not really a surprise to anyone. There is file management. So basically if you've ever worked with TypeScript or like in a React project, there is a really important notion of understanding where things are. And it's also one thing that makes kind of pasting between an editor quite difficult where it knows what the files should be, but it doesn't know like necessarily how you've structured them. So there's a big speed up there. Uh, conversation history and interactive console that actually is real kind of chat or like a real chat interface with which I find quite cool. And then here's how, roughly how the script works. So there's an initialization to kind of basically understand what your environment is and your OpenAI API key, obviously. There's sort of the handling of user commands 
There's then the processing a file and folder modifications, which is all kind of done within a handler script, which is pretty clever um, once I looked at it under the hood. And uh, again, the project planning and AI generated instructions are what I find most interesting. One of the really underrated features I think also is managing conversation history and added files. So basically understanding what like the latest state of a file is and not getting confused with um, prior chat history as to what you actually want it to do or what a current file should be edited or updated to be. Cloud has a really great feature for this where it actually will version um, what you're doing if, you're, if you end up in like a really long cloud kind of coding chat. But the thing with cloud is that it will actually slow down once you get past around like 20 back and forths, especially with code and even in pretty short um, projects. Like for instance, I was doing some stuff this past weekend making a bunch of Electron apps with it. And it turns out it's really good for that, but um, you hit limitations quite quickly once you've modified a file more than like five to six times. So basically you just need Python 3.7 or higher and an OpenAI API key. You clone the repository and then you can get started. Now, what I wanna talk about mostly are the advanced workflows. So the advanced workflows I find particularly interesting because the structure here is quite novel. So the idea being you tell it what you want to make and then it gives you a rough plan that then you can actually edit and pick apart and then you can actually proceed to the create step, which is sort of the generative step where it actually gives you kind of its first shot. And then hopefully since O1 is really good, it gives you code that's nearly perfect. And unlike our Liquid video where we went over their amazing new architecture, O1 is actually incredibly good at coding. And what's funny is in their live demo for this, they actually um, programmed a drone flight controller in real time as a demo, which I thought was pretty cool. And it actually didn't seem uh, completely fake. And then what's cool is you kind of let it add and subtract what you want. And what I really like about the chat example here is the markup being used here is really interesting because it's not just the model saying, oh, cool, here's the code. Now shove it into the, up to a file named this. You can just do slash add this code here, and then it does that. Or you can say outline a RESTful API based on these folders here. Um, so as opposed to kind of working with the terminal and then interacting with this kind of as you would as a developer and just manipulating a really clever kind of clipboard um, enhancement, which a lot of previous coding apps have done, especially the ones that just have a dedicated API for code completion. This is really a pretty well-rounded project, uh, or and you could call this a product itself. Frankly, I think it's a really great indication for open source AI projects that he didn't just run off to YC and raise a bunch of money. Like, yes, you should donate uh, to this project if you wanna see this um, be actively developed, but I think keeping stuff open source and keeping stuff kind of in a community is really, really cool. And it's something that, you know, I'm gonna name them Pair AI really did drop the ball on. So obviously none of this would be possible without OpenAI. And obviously there's been a significant amount of interest in this model uh, lately and rolling into kind of the beginning of October. So um, definitely check out this project. Definitely stay tuned for my stream later tonight, which there will be a recording of if you want to see me kind of messing around with this. I think this project again is incredibly cool. And it was the reason that I signed up for OpenAI again after canceling my subscription for quite some time. So let me know what you think. Um, do you like um, these projects? Are you more of a fan of Cursor? Are you more of a fan of uh, the Cursor clones? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, as always, I hope you learned something from watching this video. Uh, if you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.